वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल टूडे वी आर डाइविंग इनटू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ ऑरेकल एक्सेस टू कॉन्फ़िगरेशन फाइल्स एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इंपोर्टेंट फाइल्स अवेलेबल इन द एक्सेस टू सिस्टम लेट स्टार्ट विद द एक्शन कॉन्फ़िग डॉट एक्सएमएल फाइल्स डिफाइंस मेन एक्शन डिटेल सच एज ऑप्शन एंड विजिबिलिटी रूल्स यू माइट हैव सी ऑन एनी ऑफ द स्क्रीन द बटन्स आर अवेलेबल so that button change coming from the action config.xml files and on clicking on of that button which option should call and you might have also observed so we have defined bits of buttons but few buttons are enabling in few of the scenario and another's are enabling in the other scenarios so that kind of configuration details is available in the action config.xml files moving to the next important file seed application config.xml files defines operation and screen that run when access store point of service enters or exits the register application and the back office application it means what are the option is getting run in when oracle is moving from one mode to another mode so what it means is you might be aware of oracle access store can be started in the two different mode one mode is normal register mode and another is a back office mode so this file describes us when we are moving from one mode to another mode what are the option is getting executed internally the another is a auth file defines all aspects of transaction authorization such as prompting authorization method retry attempts error handling online and offline procedures so mainly this file discuss with the configuration available with the efp link configuration for example suppose what are the time out times for specific cards and if this is a you no know, response from the efp link then what procedure it should follow that all details will be available in the auth config.xml files another file is available local specify local language and internationalization feature that may be used in the access to point of service so this files deals with the localization internalization of the access to system in any of the implementation how many languages should be available for that particular implementation that details will be available in the available locally dot xml another is data loader config dot xml file this is a very important file with respect to the data loading parts so most of the you will be aware that in the access store system we used mnt files or dot dat files to load the data into the access store system then how that mnt files will be read by the access store data loader system which field is mapping to which column in the database label table that details will be available in the data loader config.xml file so any point of time if you feel there is any issue for example suppose you have provided one mnt file so third column is a price id but in the database label it's putting into the fourth column then you need to check what is the configuration available in your data loader config.xml file so one more things you need to remember that if any new table you have introduced in the access store system and you want data loader should be able to load the data to the mnt into that table then you need to define the new data loader into into data loader config.xml file then only it will be able to load that mnt files into the access to table system the another is a data source config.xml file identify the various online and offline data source available to the access to point of service if any point of time you feel there is a database connection issue you need to go and check the data source config.xml file this is the only file that will have all the data base connection details available inside that one access to get the data source detail from this files only the next one is a dtx replication config.xml file used by the access to point of service persistent framework the replication queue is used to store and retrieve replication data that has not yet been successfully replicated to its destination so in the access to system we do have a replication system and how the replication works 
on what are the configuration available we can see in the dtx replication config.xml file for example support what are the data we are replicating from store primary to the x center what are the exclusion we have done we can see in the dtx replication config.xml file environment config.xml file this file is used to configure the host name and port for the x environment application as well as to enable disable communication with it this file also contains configuration option for selecting the client authentication method and for specifying the location of environment configuration files and the marker folder hardware config.xml file is identify the peripheral hardware devices used by the access to point of service such as printers data display pin pads readers and others this is very important with respect to the hardware devices suppose you need to configure the hardware devices for particular register then you need to go and configure that hardware details in the hardware config.xml file only input config.xml file defines the rules for identifying and validating information in third scan or swipe into the access to point of service it means uh, most of the scenarios so when we are scanning we want to do the validation of for that scanning item details any files any card and all these things that detail will be available in the input config.xml file keyboard config.xml file you might be knowing in the access to there is a virtual keyboard that keyboard how should it display what are the uh, way we can configure that detail should be available in the keyboard config.xml file level config.xml file this file is used configuring configuring the layout of labels providing support for jpl printers itself locally map.xml file with respect to internet this file is very important this defines the language configuration for different areas of access to point of service for example suppose you are implementing the access to for one of the client available in the canada and the canadian store needs the associate should be able to see in the french language but the receipt should be printed in the english language so that kind of configuration we can do in the local map.xml file menu config.xml file specify the placement and ability of function and report buttons in access to point of service so i don't think this is much needed uh, most of you will be aware of the menu config.xml file option config.xml file this is the very common and important file available in the access to point of service that define the operation chain with, with respect to specific Op chain. What are the operation we have defined? How it's going executed? That complete flow of execution will be available in the op chain config.xml file. Payroll overtime config.xml file. If in your implementation you are using the time clock system module of the access to system and you want to configure how the overtime should be. configure that then you need to configure this file persistent manager config.xml file so this is the very important files available in the access store with respect to the data looking persisting functionality just now we have seen data source config.xml file where we have defined what are the data source available in the persistent manager we are using that data source available in the data source config.xml file configure the access to system for example suppose at the time of scanning the item the system should first scan from the local system if it's not available then it should scan from the store primary if it's not available in the store primary database then it should look up from the x center database there is not available then it should display this item is not on file situation so that kind of configuration we can do in the persistent manager config.xml file another important file is a pm type mapping config.xml file so this files map java object to persistent manager type so means what we have defined in the persistent manager config.xml file that we will use in the pm type mapping config.xml file for example suppose i want in by implementation so you might have seen we usually configure the employee at the corporate level so to log in into the system for the employee part 
it should consult with the accenter directly no need to consult with the access door primary then what we will do we will configure the employee object id in the pm type mapping config.xml file to point out to the accenter standard so it will directly search in the accenter database noting the local or store primary database prompt config.xml file defines on screen prompt messages buttons that are displayed when events occur in a specific access door point of service function. Receipt config.xml defines the layout for the output from the receipt printer, including franking layout. So, all the receipt configuration, how its layout should be look like, which field should uh, display where, that can be configuration could be there in the receipt config.xml sysconfig.xml file. Defines the value for access door point of service function setting means what are the functions available in the access door you want to configure to use the that function in your implementation or not that will be done in the sysconfig.xml file this is very important with respect to the configurability of the access door for example suppose your implementation want to enable the cross return functionality cross return functionality is nothing just suppose the customer has made a purchase online and they can they should be able to return in the store Digital store that functionality the cross channel return functionality. So that kind of functionality, if you want to enable, there is sysconfig system configuration available in the sysconfig. You need to make just a two. So one more thing you need to remember regarding the sysconfig.xml file. If we do use the X Office, another application in the Access Store Suite application to do the sys configuration changes, then we need to keep the track of system config metadata properties file. Otherwise, we will face the issue. Service handler.xml files. This is the very important file with respect to the web service communication. So, these files will have the endpoint details for web service URLs and all the request response adapter class detail will be available in these files. Substitute component config used to externalize configuration requirement to make it easy to override a single UI without affecting other UI customizers. So, suppose in very one of the screen you want to display for a specific line, it should display in the particular format. That kind of changes you need to just make in the substitute config and then it will be done. UI config.xml file defines the UI layout of the any of the screen in the access to. So any changes you want to do, for example, you might have seen in the bottom of, we can see a store number, register number, you want to do any modification in that area, then that you need to come down from the UI config. Validate defines the type validation required for each event in access to so any validation you want to do, you need to define one Java class and then you need to mention that Java class in the validation.xml file. Voucher config.xml defines the option for voucher activities, process, and behavior. So it will define all the details for the voucher config.xml file. System.properties file. This is another important, very important file to configure the access to system. Defines the value of access to point of service system settings. When access to pass start, it's open this file which contains the directory part where the configuration settings are. We do know install X will be used for the installation of the access store or updation of the access store so internally this application uses the access store dot properties prop base hyphen install install dot properties and base hyphen prop hyphen map dot xml i'm reiterating because these are the very important files install dot properties and base hyphen files the base hyphen each file contains a setting that will be used to configure the base functionality so suppose there are two base functionality that is available then that functionality we can enable this one in the base hyphy files and the access to the property files are only used for the customer specific configuration for any of the implementer so any changes we want to make change then we need to use the access to the property file one more thing for the person please don't 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 uh, modify the base hyphen access to the property file always modify the access to the property file and then it won't cause you to cause the any issue so these were the important configuration files available in the access store system please do let me know if i miss any important configuration file i will try to include the next time if you do have any question you can ask me in the comment section i'll try to answer each and every question
if you like this video please like and share and share with the others same consultant which can help them to increase their knowledge in the access store system thank you so much for watching this video keep learning keep exploring